Mark Ananasio, Brewers owner, joins us uh, along with Bill Schroeder. I'm Brian Anderson as we play here in the fourth mm -hmm. inning. And uh, Mark, we've been we've been anxious to have you up here ever since uh, the press conference earlier today. And I'm curious to kind of go through it with you. But I guess generally your thoughts about uh, your statements today, why do it today, and uh, and the things that you had to say today. Well, yeah, uh, I guess I'm not going to be out here tomorrow, frankly, because uh, the season's been too depressing at the end of the year to to be here for the last game for me. Uh, although I, I appreciate our fans that are coming out, and uh, so you know, with it being my last my, my last game of the season, the uh, the press and the media wanted to talk. Now, normally. You and Doug would do us typically over the years, at least since I've been here, you do an in season press conference where you'd address all the questions, but that would be after the season. So, was there a discussion about wanting to do this before the season ended? I, I just felt like in the beginning of our broadcast, we thought maybe there was an audience of players that got a chance to uh, hear what you had to say today, which I think is probably the first time that's happened. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know uh, if it was on in the clubhouse or not. I. Uh... Typically Doug and Ron at the end of the year do a, a session with all the reporters and again I don't I like to come up here and be positive but there's not much been positive about it in the last 30 days so we thought to you know, have yet another downer press conference at the end of the year didn't make sense right. it's better to just hit it now uh, cover things now such as we wanted to and and then uh, you know for the first time in 10 years we're not having a uh, an end of season meeting with the press. So, uh, generally speaking, we heard some of your comments. We played a few of the sound bites earlier today. But for those who missed it, can you just give us a general statement on the season, where you're at, where the organization is, who's coming back, who's staying? How are you viewing all of this as we move forward? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot there, and you know, there's no when. When you have a season where, and forget everybody wants to talk about the 150 days, but for five months, it's like, mm -hmm. and I was saying in the press conference, you're running a marathon for, for 21 miles, you're in the lead, and then you just collapse, right? There's something wrong there. And now I don't know what it, what it is. If it were a simple, first of all, if we knew what it was, if Doug and I could pinpoint it's this, well, this would have been a very simple solution. I, I don't think... When you lose 21 out of 29 games, it's a simple uh, fix. And so we have to really get to the rub of what went on here and then look to change it. Because, you know, one thing we have changed in Milwaukee is the culture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I remember our very first year in 05, we had 81 wins like this. It was close for <laughs> celebration. We were celebrating in <laughs> Pittsburgh, I right? believe it was. Now we got 81 wins, and we're like, oh, gosh, we got 81 wins. Right. That's pretty lousy. Now, uh, you indicated that you were going to, uh, you know, sit down with each, you know, a lot of the players. Can you give us a sense for what those discussions, uh, how they're going to go? Well, you know, in prior years as well, I'd meet before the, either the last road trip or the last home series with the team. And, you know, you generally thank everybody for their efforts and whatever. And, and I just am not in, I'm not in a feel-good mood. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not in a feel-good mood, there's no reason to address guys in, in a negative way. It, it doesn't change anything. So, uh, you know, I'm very disappointed in this group of players. Um, they work hard, there's no doubt, but this performance is way beneath their abilities. Can you say another half inning? Absolutely. Three strikeouts for Peralta. He has nine. More with Mark Adonacio when we continue. So with Mark Adonacio, and if you're uh, just joining us or joining our broadcast today, uh, Mark and Doug Melvin addressed the media before the game, which was a surprise, and it made headlines. And, of course, it is worth talking about. So we appreciate you coming up and, and joining us and uh, allowing us to ask you a few questions. And uh, Again, it was, so we're talking about, as we move forward, the Brewers move forward, uh, some of your thoughts on how the plan will go down between you, Doug, Ron, coaches, players in the next few weeks, I guess. Right. Well, you know where I want to start with this, Brian, actually, since we have the benefit of another half inning of broadcast here, is if you do a, your guys can do like a pan of the crowd here. And here it is, September, whatever, 27. And we've got an absolutely full house for a game that unfortunately does not count. So to me, that says we have the absolute best fans. Everybody says they got the best fans in mm -hmm. baseball, but we put our fans through a lot the last couple of years, and so I'm going to say we do. Mm -hmm. And so we owe it to them to uh, 
put an excellent product on the field, which I believe we did this year, and have that team perform. And this team flat out did not perform the last month, period, end of story, it didn't. These guys are way too good to be struggling. I mean, the Cubs are going to have a good young team, there is no doubt. But they, our guys are way too good to be struggling against this Cubs team, you know, as they have in this month. And I, I am not happy about it. Yeah. And that's probably coming through. Yeah, it is. 